Welcome everyone to our, our second vendor presentation today. My name is Eric Lear. I'm a member of the Launch Services Program Thermal Team out at uh, KSC, and we're hosting this year's 2022 TFAS. And today's presentation is on a, a fluids code developed out at uh, Marshall Space Flight Center. It's called GFSS, GFSSP, Generalized Fluid Systems Simulation Program. It's a very uh, uh, useful and capable code. Uh, one of the things I've used it for that uh, it does a great job handling two-phase internal pipe flow. And our presentation today will be will be put on by Luke, and he is more than qualified. He's actually one of the original original developers of the code, and actually keeps it up and adds new features. So uh, we'll be recording today's session, and as you think of questions, please type them at the chat in the chat. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll do our Q&A and go through the questions that get posted. So, uh, Alouk, welcome. Welcome. I'm glad to have you here. And uh, it's your turn. Uh, thank you, Eric, uh, for your kind introduction. Um, yes, my name is Alok Majimdar, and I work in the Propulsion Systems Department at Marshall Space Flight Center, and I've been in... Uh, involved with the GFSP development for the last 25 years. Um, although this presentation usually is given by my colleague, uh, Dr. Andre Leclerc, but he's uh, out of town this week, so I'm kind of a filling up um, for him. Uh, what we'd like to do is to uh, give you a... Uh, let me go to the uh, slideshow mode. Uh, beginning. Okay, let me add a pointer here. So I hope you all can see my full screen. Um, so I'm going to give you a um, brief introduction and the overview, and again, a brief introduction to the mathematical formulation so that you know what are the uh, physics uh, inside the code that you can model using the GFSSP. Then I'm going to go over uh, the different resistance options that are already available in G library. Uh, so does the fluids. What are the fluids you can um, you can uh, have it, and if you don't have it, uh, how you can you know generate um, the fluid properties. I'll go over with that. And finally, I'll be spending uh, a good bit of time today uh, to demonstrate um, some very simple examples, simple models, so that you can get a feeling of how the code uh, can be can be used. So uh, first, let's start with um, uh, what GFSSP stands for. It's an uh, acronym. It's, uh, it stands for Generalized Fluid System Simulation Program. It's a general purpose computer program for computing pressure, temperature, and flow distribution in a flow network. It was primarily developed to analyze you know, uh, internal flow analysis in a turbo pump and transient flow analysis of a propulsion system. But it's a fairly general purpose code. You can use it for many other purposes, and that's what is being used um, um, across the agency and in industries. But I just wanted to share, share, tell you that that's the purpose uh, of developing GFSSP. It was for when you dev trying to develop the fast track engine. That's the reason we developed it, this code. Uh, so it was started in 1994, um, and the intent intent intention was to uh, have a easy to use flow analysis tool and this code was uh, awarded the software of the year award in 2001 um, let's see okay so oops why are why it's not letting changing my screen? Okay, so uh, regarding the availability, uh, the GFSP is free uh, for NASA civil service and on-site contractors. And if you uh, need this code, contact either Andre or me, and we'll be glad to uh, give you the access to the code with the informations about the training, etc. Uh, but GFSP is also free for other civil servants and contractors um, who have got the federal contracts and but you have to get the code through um, uh, through our um, tech transfer office of Marshall 
same way the educational version of the code um, is also available uh, to the us universities and again you can get that uh, from our tech transfer office so there are more informations available in our in our website uh, so first we'd like to tell uh, you know um, in the broader um, picture where GFSSP stands, you know, uh, this is um, uh, basically it's a computational fluid dynamics code. Um, when I say the computational fluid dynamics code, I mean that uh, uh, any fluid dynamic code which uses a computational method uh, that is considered computational fluid dynamics code. Um, it can be divided into two major um, um, categories. Um, mostly when you talk about the CFD code, you think about the Navier-Stokes code. Yes, that is definitely a, 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 a um, um, great um, use of the computational fluid dynamics by solving the three-dimensional Navier-Stokes equations, uh, either by finite volume method or finite difference method, by the finite element method. But, you know, network flow analysis code is also a part of the family of the computational fluid dynamics and again yeah, you can develop a network flow analysis code either using a finite volume method or finite difference method but gfssp is a finite volume based network flow analysis code uh, now question is that when you are going to use a navier stokes and when you are going to use a network flow analysis if you are doing a very detailed flow analysis for example you know trying to find out um, flow um, in a turbine blade um, looking for a hot spot or something like that you know definitely uh, you would like to have a navier stokes analysis for a very detailed analysis it requires a very fine grid resolutions and you have to have a turbulence model and typically these um, navier stokes codes are used after you know um, design is quite matured uh, but when you are trying to um, create a new design and network flow analysis code is uh, perhaps you know um, more useful in the preliminary stage uh, because it can handle several components so when you have a several components in a system uh, you don't like to use the navier stokes code because it's um, you cannot really afford to, to, to develop you know um, detailed flow analysis for several components and it, a network flow uses the, instead of turbulence model it uses the empirical laws of transport to uh, to get the pressure drop and the heat transfer uh, so as i mentioned that in it is used during preliminary design analysis um, so i'm going to um, show you um, a, a network definitions for particularly for GFSSP, what you are seeing here, a, a, a chill down problem. So basically, you know, you have got a, um, a boundary a storage tank or where you know the boundary pressures and temperatures. Then you have a pipes, a pipes in series and, um, and, um, and these are the nodes um, where you, you uh, let me see. Okay, so let's talk about the boundary nodes. The boundary nodes, we have got two types of node. One is the boundary node, which is expressed as a kind of a double square. That's where you provide the pressures and temperatures. And, and then you have the internal nodes. Um, where you solve the mass and energy conservation equations to get the pressures and the enthalpies. And then you have the branches where you solve the momentum equations to get the flow rates. And uh, if it is a, a conjugate heat transfer, where which means that you wanted to handle the heat transfer between the solid and the fluid, then you uh, need to include the solid nodes where you solve the you know energy conservation equations um, and of course when you are constructing a solid um, node network you will have to have a conductor um, which is a solid to solid conductor that essentially handles the um, conduction heat transfer and then uh, you also need to have a conductor which connects between the um, solid node and the fluid node and that's what's called the fluid to solid conductors where you specify the heat transfer coefficients so um, 
um, uh, so so let me see. Uh, so but basically, I wanted to t tell you a little bit about. So the purpose of this problem is to doing a chill down analysis. I'm I'm going to show you some of the examples later on in this demonstration. So basically, you wanted to your problem is to see that you know how long it takes to you know chill down the pipes uh, and when you will be able to establish a steady flow uh, into this pipeline. That is the purpose of the chill down analysis. So, um, as far as the units are concerned, GFSSP uses um, uh, uh, an English system-based code, but you know you can really provide the um, um, dimensions either in English or SI system. Um, so I, I call it external and internal. Let me explain you. The external means that when you are um, providing developing the model with the GUI, uh, these are the, um, the uh, these are the uh, units you can use. You can provide the length either in inch, feet, uh, meter, and centimeter. But in the code, it is everything is in the English unit. So it is uh, internal, it is converted to the feet. Uh, so areas that you can provide inch square, feet square, meter square, centimeter square, but uh, internally it's all feet square. So when you are interacting with the code through the user subroutine, if you wanted to get the values, then what you get it is in the, for area it will be in the feet square. Pressure, although we uh, do it in the PSIA, but, uh, but within the internally it is pounds per square feet, just to be consistent with the um, other terms into the equations. Um, temperatures, you can provide in any of these units, but internally it is degree ranking, mass injection in pound mass per second, heat source in BTU per seconds. Sign convention is, it is, uh, um, it's just like a thermodynamic um, convention mass input to the node is positive mass output from the negative heat input is positive and heat output is negative uh, now i'm going to uh, very briefly uh, go over uh, the uh, mathematical formulation so um, uh, pressures uh, you, you wanted to calculate the pressures the so pressures comes from the mass conservation equation because it's a pressure based method uh, flow rate um, uh, is calculated from the momentum conservation equation fluid temperature from the energy conservation equation if it's a conjugate heat transfer solid temperature uh, you solve the energy conservation equation of the solid it. If it's a mixture, um, you solve the species concentration by solving the mass fractions of the species. And if it's a transient problem, then you also need to calculate the mass, and that is come from the thermodynamic equation of state. So I'm going to show you the um, mass conservation equation. This is a nodal layout of GFSSP. So one node can be connected with the multiple nodes uh, and, and you write the mass conservation equation that is the rate of change of mass into this particular node is equal to the summation of the flow that is coming in, that the net sum of the flow. So if you do a, a steady state problem, of course, you know, uh, the left hand side goes to zero. So which means that all inflow and the outflow must be uh, must be same. So that's the steady state flow. So one of the things, you know, I told you earlier that, you know, we solve the pressure from the mass conservation equation, but your question might be that, hey, where is the pressure? Well, um, pressures are implicit into the flow rate because we are solving simultaneously. Um, um, the, 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 you can really still make this equation as the, you know, um, solver for the pressures, and that's what has been done. Uh, so momentum conservation equation is nothing but the uh, representations of the Newton's second law of motion. So on the left hand side, you have got the mass and accel types acceleration. On the right hand side, uh, the, the forces are there. So there are different forces, pressures, gravity, friction, centrifugal, if it's rotating, uh, and etc. So what I'm showing here is a um, um, is the nomenclature uh, for the um, branch configuration so the flow rate uh, is is solved into the branch and it is a function of the pressures which is located at the node and in this particular one i'm also showing the uh, uh, gravity uh, so um, so you, you need to specify the angle that the flow is making with the gravity so that the gravitational force can be calculated and also uh, there is a um, it it 
can handle also the rotation, which means that you know if you define the axis of the rotation uh, and uh, uh, angular velocity, it will also calculate the centrifugal force. Uh, energy equation again. It, uh, we go back to the node and we solve the energy equations at the node. Um, it looks very similar to the mass conservation equation. Like you know, you, you see that now instead of uh, mass conservations, you are doing the energy conservation. So there's the mass times the internal energy, and on the right hand side, all the energy that is coming from the neighboring nodes, you know, by way of enthalpies. And you can also have a you know um, um, heat a heat input. Um, the purpose of this energy conservation equation to get the enthalpies. So once we know the pressure and the enthalpies, you can calculate all the properties. Uh, now, when it's a um, you know, conjugate heat transfer, you also solve for the energy conservation equation. Energy conservation equations uh, accounts for uh, the you know all the energy coming from the um, uh, fluid node, uh, solid nodes, and also from the ambient node. So you can express the energy conservation equations um, in this form. And on the left hand side is the rate of change of energy for this particular node and all the energies that is coming uh, through the conduction um, convection um, and and from the ambient you can also include also the radiation also uh, so um, so the so, so temperature of the solid node it can be expressed as a temperature of all the neighboring um, um, and, and neighboring um, nodes, which includes the fluid node, um, solid node, and the ambient node. Okay, so this slide shows uh, the um, program structure. So GFSSP essentially consists of uh, three uh, modules. Uh, the um, uh, the graphical user interface, that's where you, um, user spends most of the time and I'm, during the demonstrations, I'm going to show you how you can develop a model um, uh, through the graphical user interface. Essentially, you create your entire you know, um, flow circuits here and then provides the boundary conditions. And as soon as you have finished your you know, doing the um, model development, you simply um, hit the run button and when you do that one it really creates an input data file and that's an ascii file which you can uh, which you can see but essentially the solver and the property module uh, reads that uh, input data file and generates all the equations you know depending upon how many nodes are there how many branches are there uh, it knows you know how many mass conservation equations to be solved how many momentum conservation equations to be solved so it is all done inside the solver and it also takes uh, the help of the property programs um, because you need all the properties so i'll talk about that a little bit more later how the properties are um, are provided and uh, to the to the solver program then it solves it and uh, you can just you know get the output and see the output so so many programs just can be done with this loop but you know there are some additional features there which you call user subroutines if you are an advanced user if you wanted to add your new modeling capabilities and there is a provision of user subroutines user subroutines are nothing but um, a a bunch of uh, dummy subroutines which are called from the source code at different time of the solution that will allow you to introduce your new model you know for example if you wanted to have a new heat transfer coefficient gfssp has some heat transfer coefficients uh, library but you may need to use something else and this gives you an opportunity that you can provide your new heat transfer coefficients if you wanted to um, create some new source terms you can do that one so there are a lot of opportunities for developing um, uh, additional capabilities and that is done through the user subroutines so once you are become an advanced user you will be probably using more and more the user subroutines but i want to tell you that the these user subroutines are need to be developed in the Fortran code. Um, so now I I talk about and the um, uh, resistance options. So um, GFSP has got um, um, many options available to you, and of course you can add your new options if you want to. But these are the available. So if, for example, if you have a pipe flow, right, you can you can define your pipe by 
telling you what's the length, the diameter, etc. You can have a restriction. You provide the area of the orifices and the flow coefficients, then it will handle that restrictions. Similarly, you have a non-circular duct. It can have different you know, cross sections, and you can define uh, any, any type of the non-circular ducts. Now, uh, there is a pipe flow with entrance and exit losses. So, you know, um, in, in one branch, you can handle not only the pipe, but also the entrance and the exit losses to that one. And there are a couple of incompressible flow options that they are. This is a called thin sharp orifice, and then you have a thick orifice. You have got, you know, reduction or expansion. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the GFSP has been developed for the turbo pump. So, um, so this is a very, very typical option for the turbo pump, the rotating annular duct. Uh, the uh, duct is rotating, but the flow is going, you know, perpendicular to the plane of the paper. So actually through that one. So it will account for what is the uh, flow resistance during that um, situation. Uh, you can also have a rotating radial duct, and so it will account for the frictions uh, in a rotational environment. Um, there are a couple of labby seals options are also there. You know, by you provide the geometrical specification of a labyrinth seal, um, the pitch, um, the clearance, and it will calculate the pressure drop. And face seal is also a very high resistance path, very narrow path uh, through which the flow is going on. It's a kind of a developed view of um, of a um, of a rotating cylinder. This is also very common for the turbo machinery. And there are a large number of common fittings and the valves, like you know, T's, bends, and uh, and you can you can model a very large number of pipe fittings through these options. Uh, there are um, uh, what we have so far talked about is the resistance only but uh, but if you have a momentum source like a pump you can also use that in a branch so instead of a pump being a momentum sink it could be a momentum source so in that case you can provide a pump characteristics you can provide a pump power and um, and there are also valve with the given CV, uh, viscojet option is also available and there is a control valve also and uh, you can also have a user-defined options. Um, you can create your own resistance by providing some um, um, Fortran coding into the user subroutines to do that one. It has an option uh, to predict the uh, pressure loss in a heat exchanger core. Um, the parallel tubes, if you wanted to have a manifold where you can safely assume the flow rates are all equal, then you can um, use the parallel tube option also to calculate the pressure drop between the headers. Uh, compressible orifice, which is a very um, um, widely used option that allows you to calculate the choked flow uh, through an orifice. And again, there is another labby seal option, so they are called eggly correlations. Um, you can also ha have a fixed flow rate option. GFSP typically, um, you know, calculates the flow rate based on the um, pressures at the boundary nodes. But if you wanted to run some analysis where you already know the fixed um, flow rate is known, you only wanted to calculate the pressure drop and other heat transfer effect. You can use that fixed flare rate op option also. Uh, there is also a two-dimensional capability within the GFSSP, which we don't have time to discuss today. But yes, I just wanted to let you know that, and there are you can do some two-dimensional calculations. Uh, as the fluids, um, and GFSSP has got two codes integrated um, with its solver. Uh, one is the GASP, uh, which has been developed at, at the Glenn Research Institute. Um, in 1970s, um, so that's the Fortran code which we have integrated there. It has got you know most of the um, our cryogenic fluids, uh, water, um, um, carbon dioxide, etc. Uh, we also have the RP1 as a table, um, uh, and then ideal gas. And I'm going to show you an example of that with the ideal gas. Uh, if you do not have your fluids uh, in the GFSP library, you have an option to provide uh, the fluid properties in form of the table. Uh, so there are three uh, additional fluids which you can add in, in the library if you want. And the gas pack, which is a commercial code, it is the precursor of the rep prop. 
developed at the NIST. Uh, so that is also integrated and it has got many of the refrigerants. So now I'm going to uh, change um, the gear. I'm going to show you uh, the uh, demonstrations. I can pause a, um, a second if you have any question on that before we uh, go to that. Okay, so I want to share the screen. So let me see for you. Okay. I'll wanted to make sure you are seeing my screen. I did not see that yet. Uh, are you seeing the uh, modeling screen? Can you hear me? Yes, we see it. OK, good. OK. Uh, so um, basically, um, I'm going to show you um, maybe um, uh, maybe I wanted to go back to the um, yeah, go back to the uh, PowerPoint just for a second. OK, let's see. Probably need to. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm I'm going to go back to the uh, PowerPoint string. So this is the model which I'm going to show you how we can um, build in GFSSP. So this is a pressurized tank, and I wanted to model the blowdown. So you have a 10 feet cube tank, and with a you know, orifice of 0 0.1 inch, and we wanted to investigate the um, pressure changes during the blowdown process. So uh, now I'll go back to the um, uh, GFSP model to build this one. So let me stop sharing one and come back to uh, share screen again and uh, do this. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so first time I'm going to create a new model. Um, so, um, so when I'm going to create a new model, the first thing is a, a model title. So I'm going to tell it's a. Uh, Tank blow down. Uh, I'll put a my initial here. Go to the next. So first thing we'll have to um, um, uh, create a working folder. So I'm going to um, go and create a, a working folder here. So let's let's go to this. Uh, I have got a, a GFSSP class, and that's where I wanted to go. So this is um, so this is defaults, and uh, this is the class demo. So this is the one I, I wanted to do it, and I'm going to call it a demo uh, demo two because this is our second demo usually in our GFSSP class. So I'll call it a demo two. So now you can see uh, that uh, we have already have a working folder and I have defined that input file demo2 by default because I have named it and um, and demo2.out. Uh, so th so this is an unsteady problem. So I'm going to go to uh, this one and I'm going to set up um, a time steps and I'm going to give it a time Oops. Okay, so I'm going to go to the unsteady. Uh, so default is the steady. I'm going to go to the unsteady. 
So uh, my time step is 0.1 second, start time is zero, and I'm going to run it for say 300 seconds. And I'm going to put a print frequency, which is really that how uh, frequently you would like to print. If you put one, there will be a lot of, you know, generation of output. And uh, the, in unsteady problem, really the output uh, um, is not very useful. You really need to do the plot. So that's what I'm, I'm going to uh, use only frequency of 10. And on the right hand side, there are some options. If you are going for the advanced options like tank pressurizations, if you want to do a um, uh, water hammer, then you, you do this valve open and close. But this is a simple problem. So I'm not going to use any of these here. I, I'll go for OK to, uh, um, and I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to do the fluid. So I, I hit this property button. So you can see this is the property. So you always go there and select one of these. So I, I go to the fluids and I decide to use the ideal gas because this is the air. Um, so air can be represented by an ideal gas. So when you do that, you select uh, the fluid from here and simply uh, hit this one and that becomes your um, um, fluid of your choice. You could have done, you know, organ, oxygen, anything you can do. But for this particular problem, I'm going to use it air. And uh, air's um, ideal gas properties, if you have an ideal gas, you'll have to provide all these things, you know, gas constant, C sub P, viscosity. And for the air, it's already there. So I I'm going to use that one. So I, I, I select the uh, air here. Uh, so... Next, to, um, after doing that, um, I'm going to um, go to the output tab. So I, I again go to the properties and go to the output. So I just wanted to show you that, you know, I have already selected my wind plot. Um, and wind plot has got two options. One is the binary file, one is the CSV file. That's a um, comma separated variable. But we uh, prefer the binary file because it, it just creates one file with all the variables and it is very easy to you know um, um, operate while it is running you can um, you can see the results so that's the reason our option is is the binary file and i'm you know pl uh, plotting every um, um, every time steps you can also change the right frequency if you have a very large model you may choose to um, have the right frequency 10 or 20 or 50 but um, but uh, but it's a small model so i'll keep this one uh, and there are you know other informations like you know can, you can have uh, extended plot informations if you do that one i'll put that one you can get the enthalpies and other properties also you, you can you can plot that one so um, yeah I'm going to select that one. Okay, so now I think um, now I'm ready to um, uh, to create my model. Uh, so first, you know, uh, there, there are certain some options there. You know, in the background, there is a um, grid setup. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to have a kind of a uh, plain grid. Um, I mean, white grid. Uh, that I, my preference is, but you may like to choose that one. And I don't want snap items to grid also. So, uh, so I, I I wanted to try have a um, very clean uh, um, background. So uh, now, if you look here, um, one of the feature I wanted to um, mention here about GFSP that um, you do not have too many things here. We have very basic elements and uh, to to start the model. So basically, you. Um, um, uh, you have the boundary node, internal node, and the branch. Uh, with uh, these three, you can build all the uh, models, and the details will come a little later on. So I wanted to first uh, uh, start with the internal node. So I put one this that that represents my uh, tank. Uh, so I go back and. Uh, for first, I selected the item. Now I unselect it. Now I'm ready to select another one. So other we, I, I put a boundary node. So uh, I put a boundary node here, and go unselect it. Um, 
So now I wanted to connect this uh, internal node with the boundary node. And how I do it, I just go to the branch here. So as soon as I click the branch, then uh, it creates uh, several handles across the nodes. And all you can have to do is to click that one. And um, so you just connect these two nodes. And I go again, unselect it. Um, so now it's a question mark. So which means that you have to define what type of branch it is. So the, now you come here and you right click it here. And then you put the set branch type. Now you have got all the options that I sh showed you earlier. They're all available uh, to you. And all you have to do is to select. Now, what I'm going to select, I'm going to select a compressible orifice here. Uh, why I'm going to do that compressible orifice? Because um, if you saw the problem I told uh, earlier, you have a 100 PSI um, tank pressure. And here, ambient is 14.7. So you're, you have a pressure difference, which is a ratio of more than, more than two. So what happens that it, initially your flow will be choked. So you wanted to have a uh, resistance option that is capable of calculating the choked flow. And that's the reason I selected the um, compressible orifice. Um, so um, now I wanted to show, uh, tell you about this boundary um, uh, node. So I, I, I right click that. So we have got the properties here. So when you say properties, you see that I call it a history file. Uh, why it's a history file? Because for a transient problem, um, uh, your boundary pressure can change with the time. It may, it may stay constant, but it may also change with the time. So that's the reason we provide a history file, which you have to uh, generate. So I, I edit that one. And of course, in this particular case, um, the boundary remains at uh, atmospheric pressure all the time. So I put zero and you can use a tab here to go to the pressure and I'll put a 14.7. And then I put another tab, uh, which is a 80 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, and then we put another tab, which is the ideal uh, fraction, which is uh, default is one. So why it is? Because you could have a mixture there. If you have a mixture, then you have to provide the mass fraction for all the constituents. So, but it is a single fluid, so I don't have to do that. Now, if, if I hit enter, then it automatically create a new line, but also you can put a add line also, you can do that one. So it says that, um, uh, what's the next time step? Um, usually it interpolates between the time to get your pressures, but because it's a constant, I'll put 300 here and I'll keep it all the same. So which means that the, during the entire run, the pressures will be 14.7 and temperature will be 80 degree Fahrenheit. And that is the uh, uh, atmospheric condition. So I'm done with the, um, with the, uh, with the boundary right now. Uh, now let's uh, so I say okay so which means I'm done with the boundary now I wanted to do the internal node so for the internal node uh, uh, what I have to provide I have to provide uh, the pressures and I know that the pressure was 100 psi so I go there and I put 100 here and then temperature was 80 degree Fahrenheit so let me change it from 60 to 80. And then the node volume, it's an inch cube, but I wanted to give it in the feet cube. So I, I, I go there, I, I change it to feet cube, and I provide 10 feet cube. Um, so, um, uh, uh, so that's how we, we, we provide the inlet condition. So I think uh, that's all I, I need. So uh, Okay, uh, I have not provided the... Um, um, uh, branch information yet. So this is a compressible orifice. So I have to provide the area. Now I'm going to use a um, a, a calculator um, which is already available within the code. I know it's a 0.1 inch, so I can go and uh, calculate it in my calculator. But instead, I'm going to use the calculator uh, built in, in the code. Uh, so it's a pi d squared by 4. So I can, uh, pi is already there. So all you have to do is to uh, use capital P and I to represent the pi. And then pi by 4. 
and then uh, star 0 0.1 uh, star 0 0.1 so pi d square by 4 so um, so it is done and and you know that so if i go from it's now symbol if i click here it will give me the area in inches square and i also need to put a flow coefficient i'm going to put flow coefficient to one just so that is uh, done so um, so everything is done i have defined my boundary uh, node history file i have given my initial condition um, uh, for, for the um, for the tank and one of the things so whatever you provide into the internal node it becomes an initial condition for a transient problem if it is a steady state problem that was a guessed value but uh, but but a transient problem it is important because your initial it's the initial value problem what is your initial value that is going to determine your uh, next time step value so it is all done now we can run it so the question is how we run this one if there are several ways you can run the pro problem um, you can really um, uh, uh, most of the time i use this one just to run gfsp solver but you can also you know um, uh, run through here also. So uh, I usually pr prefer to just click this one and we'll just, you know, cross our finger and run it to see if it runs. Okay, so looks like uh, we ran for 300 seconds and you can uh, look into the output, you know, uh, so you can really look into the output here if you want. Um, uh, so, but you know, uh, you got you know um, uh, pressures. Uh, it's a, since a single node, you know, it got the pressure, temperature, density, mass, quality, um, and then for the branches, you have got the flow rates, delta p, you know, velocity, all those things. But it's kind of a boring to look into this type of. It's not very useful. Uh, so I would rather use uh, the uh, wind plot to to see our results. Wind plot is another, you know, um, Marshall code uh, which is kind of uh, available to all of you. Um, at so let me see if I can share the wind plot. Maybe you don't see the wind plot here. I may have to go and share the screen uh, to, let's see. So let me see if I can share. Okay, so no, I'm not sharing the wind plot, but now we should be able to share the wind plot. Uh, can you see the wind plot? Hello? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you can, uh, you can see. Yes, look, we can see it. I'm sorry about that. I've been taking my headphone off to listen. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, that's okay. So, all right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I wanted to show you. Um, so, um, let me give you a little bit of introduction. If you are not familiar with the wind plot, many of you probably already know what is the wind plot. Uh, so, it's a very, very powerful um, package. Uh, um, um, so uh, uh, here, I, we can immediately uh, by clicking this button. You know, um, you can. Um, uh, get the wind plot file into the GFSSP. Otherwise, you have to probably import uh, also. You can you can you can uh, import it also. Uh, so uh, so this is the most useful button, which is the parameter selection. If you click that one, it will give all that has been imported by um, GFSSP. It gives so since the two node model P1 represents the pressure at the node one, P2 represents the pressure at uh, um, node two. Similarly, T1, T2, this is the compressibility, that's the density, uh, resident mass, quality. And then you go to the branch, it gives you the flow rates here, you know, uh, F12 is the flow rate, V12 is the velocity, the Nolts number, etc. So um, um, most important thing, what you would like to know is the pressure. So let's try to plot the pressure. So here is the pressure plot. So it starts with 100 psi, and after 300 seconds, it goes to um, uh, 
uh, almost 24, 24 psi, so that the pressure drops. And remember, it's an adiabatic process hmm. uh, because you are, we are not considering any heat transfer in this model. We are assuming uh, that the, um, there is an adiabatic blowdown process, and that can be reflected if you look into the temperature. Uh, you see the temperature in five minutes goes from 80 uh, to minus, you know, um, um, minus 100 degree, uh, almost minus 110 degree Fahrenheit, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's a completely adiabatic blowdown. It may not be realistic uh, because, you know, in, in, in reality, uh, there will be heat transfer uh, between the tank wall to the fluid. So the temperature will not drop that much, you know, but we'll go to the next that one. Um, so again, you know, I wanted to show you a few more things. I know if you wanted to see the flow rate, which is got F12, uh, so that, that that's the, that's the flow rate. So, um, so okay. So I think um, um, I think I'm going to maybe I'm I'm going to um, now you're probably seeing. Uh, let's see. Let's see if. You, uh no i think i have to uh i have to close that one let, let me go back and uh, and share my um, so let me stop sharing the wind plot and go back to share again my uh, gfssp model uh, so hopefully now you're seeing yeah, we, we see it now. Okay, thank you. Uh, so now I, I wanted to develop a, a conjugate heat transfer model. So, so to do that one, I go back here, I change it to um, change the name of the file. And why I'm doing it? Uh, because I wanted to create a, another wind plot file so that you can compare uh, with the solution of, um, of this model. Um, uh, this uh, conjugate heat transfer model with the adiabatic loop blood. So that's what I want to do. So that's why I created a, a new file. Now I would like to uh, develop a conjugate heat transfer uh, model. So uh, first I would like to tell that, hey, I'm doing a conjugate heat transfer model. So how I do that one, I go back to the properties again and I hit the circuit here. So there we have got all the additional options, you know, um, um, I didn't, we don't have time to go through all of this, but what I'd like to do here, there is a conjugate heat transfer. So I wanted to select that one. So which means that now if I click it, I'll be allowed to develop a conjugate heat transfer model. So I did that one. So let's, let's go back and do it. As soon as I did it, you can see that some additional elements now available to me. I have a element called, um, new element called solid node. I have a new element called ambient node. I have a new element called conductor. So now I'm going to uh, represent the, um, um, the solid mass of the tank. So I, I took a solid node and put it over there and go back to this mode. So, um, and then what I would like to do, I would like to uh, connect this solid node with the fluid node. So how I do that one, I go back to this conductor and um, making a uh, provision for uh, connecting the solid node. So I-, hey, I uh, uh, Hello? Yes. Uh, yes. Real quick, we have to start, stop uh, right at the top of the hour because we have another vendor. Just want to let you know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so I'll probably take some time for questions. Uh, yeah, so may maybe I'll just finish this one and go for a question. Um, and I probably wanted to show you a few more uh, pretty quick examples, but I'll I'll st stop that as soon as. Uh, so this is important uh, to, to show that to you. Thank you for reminding that. Okay, so I go here and then I um, I put this um, temperature. Uh, let's say it's eighty degree temperature. And uh, uh, mass, it's a, uh, I have just already calculated what will be the mass of this tank, which is 471 pound. There is no heat source. And the material, I go and uh, select, um, select the stainless steel from here. Uh, so, so let's the stainless steel 304. Um, so we did that one. Uh, and now I'm going to go over here 
and the heat transfer area i have already calculated it's the surface area of a spherical tank uh, which is um, uh, three two five zero which is the surface area and heat transfer correlation i'm going to there are a lot of correlations available but i'm going to see the vertical one and the characteristics length you have to provide for natural convection so i'm providing um, the characteristics diameter of this in feet uh, so that's okay um, so now I think I'm ready to run this. Uh, so let me let me run that quickly. Okay. Uh, so now I go back to the wind plot and uh, and share my screen here and let's go to this wind plot here. Okay, I do not know whether you are sharing my wind plot. Probably not. Let me let me uh, let me go. We st we still see uh, the GFS SSP. Okay, all right. So let me see if you if you. S okay, I I may may have to stop this one first. Uh, okay, there's wind plot. Uh, are you seeing the wind plot? Uh, um, yes, uh, yep, we see wind plot now. Okay. Uh, okay, but uh, so uh, now if I plot P1, um, we saw a slightly different plot. Uh, let me see uh, um, if I can go back and show this, uh, go to this class demo and try to get my old wind plot. Oops. Hey, uh, Alok, do you mind yes. if we just go ahead and stop and take some questions yeah let, let's do that one so let's you have got enough idea to you know how we can model yeah it. So yeah let's, that, let's, that was let's, really let's good that was a question. great presentation okay, thank you yeah i think okay. we have got only a few minutes okay. so let's can see the questions. chat can you see the chat uh let's see uh, hold on um, so uh, um the first question is what is in the input file how do you create the input file what all information you need to put into the input file uh, okay, that's a good question. You really uh, don't have to do do anything into the input file. So when you uh, develop your model and you, if you hit the run button, then you can immediately creating an input file. You can take a look into that input file, uh, um, but, uh, but you don't have to do anything into the input file. It is all... Um, uh, you'll be only working with your graphical user interface. As soon as you make some changes into your, you know, input here, and you are um, you are running the code, a new input file will be created, and that input file will be read by the solver and will give you a new solution. So, in fact, you really don't need to understand the input file at all. Is that uh, answers your question? Yeah, yeah. The code's very very streamlined. You don't have to do that. Any other questions? Is it a variation of boundary condition? Oh, oh yeah. Can you run the code in a loop? For example, parametric variation of boundary condition. Yep, that's it. Um, a, you, um, I'm, uh, well, Yes and no. Uh, like, you know, if you wanted to run a, a series of um, steady state solution, 
you probably can do it by providing a in a quasi steady mode and and you can you know you can provide the boundary conditions different boundary conditions you can do it at a different time steps so if if you are trying to run a series of steady state solutions with different pressures yes you can do you go to a quasi steady approach and then you provide a history file and and do that one uh, but um, but if you wanted to uh, um, uh, create a um, um, I would say that um, stream of runs, we you probably have to create your own you know um, um, uh, uh, command file to, to execute it. It is not part of the GFSSP. You, you have to create your own command file to, to run several um, uh, several runs. It's not really part of the GFSP, but you can do it. Uh, becomes unchoked later in time. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Uh, what happens when you use a um, um, uh, choked um, conditions? It it really check check the critical pressure ratio. So if it is below the critical pressure ratio, it is going to use the choked flow condition. But if it is you know uh, higher than the uh, critical pressure ratio where the flow is not choked, it is going to take actual pressure ratio to calculate the flow rate. So you, you don't have to worry about it. It will, it will be always uh, doing that one, depending upon the specific heat ratio, the critical pressure ratio is calculated within the code, and then it goes either on a choked, either it will take the choked flow equation or you know regular equation. That's a good question. Look, I think that's it. Look, excellent presentation, and thanks for coming here to talk to us about uh, this very capable code, and and uh, we have great um, participation and some really good questions. So, okay, and I just wanted to let you know that if any of you are interested to get a copy of the code, feel free to you know contact either me or Andre. We'll be very happy to help you, and because we cannot handle much in in this little demonstrations, but you know there are a lot more things we can share if you are interested. Just don't hesitate. Contact us, and we'll provide you all the informations that you need. And again, Eric, thank you so much for arranging this. Um, and um, I'm glad to have this opportunity to uh, to present. Yes, thank you, Alok. And I'll add that uh, Alok and his, his staff are very helpful and always available. Great job, Alok. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You all have a good day.